mistake of thinking that they're true instances. Um, that is, you know, each one basically takes up uh, one chunk of memory, and then the particle system at render time will actually take that uh, whatever that instance is and hand it to the renderer just once, and then the renderer will take that as an instance and then use that uh, that piece of geometry just once, and then uh, apply the transform of each particle to that that uh, object at render time. And therefore, you know, that teapot effectively would only take up a small amount of memory. It would get used 900,000 times and it wouldn't really, you know, take up hardly any memory whatsoever. And in that way, you would get, you know, millions of particles rendering. Well, that actually isn't the case because if you look at the, um, I think it's in the, uh, let me have a look where it is. Can't quite remember at the moment, but there's an option somewhere where you can actually define um, at render time. Um, just exactly, ah, here, here we are, it's actually in the render um, op operator, which is actually where I thought it was Im immediately, and I didn't see it straight away. You can see they have the option of outputting a single mesh, which is the, s the default option, multiple meshes, which actually um, particle flow can not handle very well, and a mesh per particle. But in each one of those cases, the mesh isn't, an, isn't a true instance. So um, don't get fused between using shape instance and uh, thinking of those instances um, as being treated as instances at render time because they're not. They they usually take up the same amount of memory per um, instance. So if it takes up 5K and you've got 500 of them, it's going to take up 500K. Um, and when you've got millions of particles, that very quickly means that you'll run out of memory. Um, what shape instance does do, of course, is take the, the geometry that you've given it and instance that to the particle. So obviously you get a shape uh, based on the geometry that you provided. So if I scrub the timeline, you can see if I put it on shaded mode, you can see these teapots are appearing over the surface of the sphere. Now, these are actually um, particles. If I go to the display and change it to, uh, let's say, circles, you can just about see these little circles here. And uh, I'll actually change the color of that so it's a little bit different. Okay, there you go. So you can see you've got these little circles where these particles are appearing. I'll put the display back to geometry so you can actually see the instance geometry appearing there. Now, that's all well and good. What, what are the other options you have? Well, you can actually change the scale of the particle, uh, the instance geometry coming into it uh, using this option here. You can see I've got it set to 75% at the moment. You can actually change that to whatever size you want it to be. Obviously, if you've got very large um, geometry, you don't want to uh, rescale it. You want to instance it in and then actually modify that uh, within the um, the flow itself. You can later on obviously go in and modify the scales of these individually using a scale operator, make it random, you know, have some random variation there. Uh, you can also do that actually within the operator itself. The shape instance operator, as you can see, it's got a scale percentage, but it also has a variation percentage. So if we put in some variation there, you can see we've got some large teapots and some small teapots. So that's all pretty uh, easy to understand stuff. We'll go on to uh, the next thing, which is uh, one of the options up here. You can see I'll actually get rid of the scale option for the moment. So they're all um, at their original size. One of the options up here in the separate particles for uh, group one of the options is object elements now this teapot uh, and this is why I've actually picked the teapot is actually made up a separate element uh, elements I should say it's um, actually a procedural object um, that's the way Mac stores all of its uh, its uh, primitives it's a procedural object it's a bit like a NURBS object it's it's held in memory as a kind of NURBS object a mathematically defined object uh, with mathematically defined surfaces and then when you actually apply it in the viewport, you have a tessellation value and you can increase that tessellation value, as I'm sure you're well aware of. You can see at the moment this has a, a segmentation value of four, but obviously you can put that up and you get a little bit more detail in your teapot. Now there are actually, uh, let me see, there's one surface here, which is the spout, another surface here, which is the body of the teapot, the lid is another surface, and the handle is another surface. So if we go to um, object elements, each one of these surfaces inside the teapot is treated as an element, which I'm sure you're aware of in Max is, you know, if you get two spheres and attach them to together to make one um, editable mesh, 
you can actually go into